the evolution of a demo reel. Everyone, I'm Matthew Cornwell with Get Taped in Atlanta, Georgia, one of Atlanta's original audition taping services, which I co-own with my amazingly talented, beautiful wife and best friend, Brooke. It's all true. Before we get into today's video, I wanted to do a quick plug for a new online course that we're offering at Get Taped. It's called Get Set Up, and it's all about how to rock your home self-tape setup. So check the show notes for the link to the course. It's broken up into three sections, good, better, and best, so that no matter what your budget is or what your space limitations are, you can learn tips and tricks on how to rock that home self-tape setup. You're welcome. And now on to our topic the evolution of a demo reel. Now, right off the top, I just wanna clarify that what this video is about is how your demo reel will change over the course of a long, illustrious career. Because those of you at the beginning of your career right now are going, I don't have a demo reel. And if you have representation already, you've heard that you need a demo reel and please send us your demo reel or upload your demo reel with your submission. And it can just cause so much anxiety or FOMO that you don't have that tool in your tool belt just yet. I'm here to tell you to relax. It's okay. You don't need one if you're at the very beginning of your career. I mean, kudos if you already have representation and you don't have a lot of credits under your belt. But don't stress about the lack of the demo reel when you're at the start of this journey. In fact, a few years ago, I was at a Q&A with a notable casting director here in the Southeast. And one of the things they said was, no demo reel is so much better than a bad demo reel. And if you're at the beginning of your career where you don't have a lot of footage yet, and you try to jump to that stage of having a demo reel, you're likely going to be putting together a bad demo reel that could actually do more harm than good. So again, if you're at the beginning of your career, please, please, please do not stress about not having the demo reel. Side note, I'm trying out a new lighting scheme that I'm hoping will work for me moving forward. Now, let's flash forward to after you have worked on some really great indie projects. And what I mean by great is they should be very high quality projects. And in addition to that, you don't just appear in these projects, especially with little to no dialogue, but you actually do have scenes in these projects. Well, maybe you're ready to start pulling that footage and doing something with it, but you might not be ready for an actual demo reel just yet. So in those early stages, when you are pulling footage from these projects and you're actually proud of it, it's representing you, it's representing what you can do at your best, wink, wink, this should not be the worst performance of your career and you should not be using it just because it's the only footage you have. Only use this footage if it really truly represents you and showcases your talents, showcases your essence, showcases how casting directors will cast you in the future. Okay, so let's just say that you have one, two, maybe three projects where you've got some really great footage that could be mistaken for full budget Hollywood studio productions. So now what do you do with it? Because like I just mentioned, you might not yet be ready for a reel, even with these few projects. First of all, if these projects were indeed high quality, then at the very least, you can take your footage, whittle it down to a clip and upload those individual clips to Actors Access or to other websites, or maybe to send to your agent if they're going to use it in pitching you to future casting directors and future opportunities. But a quick note there, let's say that you have 45 seconds of total screen time in this indie film and you are super proud of every single frame. Please do not send that entire 45 second clip to your agent or to upload it to Actors Access. You need to edit down your footage for a couple of reasons. One is to highlight you. This is all about you. This is a marketing tool for you. And since it's an indie project and presumably the person you're in the scene opposite is not a celebrity of any kind, then we don't need to worry about them. We certainly don't care about the story. That is where so many actors get demo reels and this whole discussion wrong. They think that, well, if I edit out that line of dialogue from the other character, you won't understand what my next line means. Who cares? All we're trying to do is see how you were cast before, how you were trusted before. We're not trying to learn the story of your character or learn the story of the film. So whittle those clips down to the least amount of footage necessary to understand what it is you were portraying on screen. If I'm a cop, okay, what kind of cop was I? 
I was a friendly neighborhood cop. That takes about five to 10 seconds to figure out. Anything beyond that starts to get into the ego zone. You know what I'm talking about? Where you're just enjoying watching yourself on screen, kind of like a YouTube video that doesn't need to be this long. That again. So just take my word for it. If you have 30 seconds, whittle it down to 20. If you have 45 seconds, try to get it down to 30 or 25 and so forth and so on. I guarantee there's a lot of fat that can be trimmed from around the edges of that clip to make it showcase you more and to get rid of unnecessary lines of dialogue from you and from your scene partners. And the other note that I'll give you that should be universal, everyone agrees on this, is that to the best of your ability, start the clip on you, end the clip on you. That is, the first frame of the clip should be your face, and the last frame of that clip should be your face. Now, once you have three to five great clips from different projects, now it's time to put together your first demo reel. Now again, by great clip, I mean it should have pristine audio. So many indie productions get audio wrong, and it shows, and you can tell in the first nanosecond of watching the footage that, oh, this is really low budget indie footage, yikes. So make sure that it's high quality in the audio department, that it looks good and makes you look good. And I don't mean attractive, I just mean that once again, it highlights who you are and what you're selling to future casting directors, and that it has enough footage highlighting you such that you can trim that down to a nice 10 to 15 seconds. Great. So now you do that with each of these three to five clips and you piece together your first demo reel. Now, the next question might be, oh, what order do I put those clips in? You don't have to worry about chronology just because one of those clips is from last month and then one of them is from three years ago. You don't have to worry about the actual order of those projects in terms of when you shot them. You can use discernment as to which one you want to be first, which one you want to be in the middle, which one you want to be last, and so forth. And for those types of decisions, you really need someone in your corner who you trust that will be discerning about the order of your clips and how much to shave off each clip and how to manipulate all of that to make you look your best. Brooke does that for us at Get Taped, and she has a super discerning eye when it comes to the order of the clips, how much of each clip to maintain, which clips to delete entirely, etc. And yes, I did say which clips to delete entirely because if you're at this point now where you have three to five good projects under your belt, presumably in a couple of those you had multiple scenes. And so now your total screen time might be upwards of four minutes, five, six, ten minutes. And you certainly can't use all of that footage in your demo reel. Hashtag snooze fest. No casting director, no prospective agent or manager has the time to sit through that much footage when you're still at the beginning of your career. So you need to edit this down to for sure under two minutes when this is going to be your first demo reel as a professional actor. And heck, I'd even say closer to a minute or less for that first demo reel. Here's a rule of thumb. If you have three clips or more in this demo reel, you should be on that third clip by the 45 second mark. So you see how the total runtime is probably gonna be around a minute to a minute and a half tops. Now, as you add more projects to your resume, you'll have more footage, and now you can start to beef up that demo reel a little bit more, and eventually it will reach the two minute mark. And now as your career is evolving, you're gonna start booking high profile projects, network TV shows, full budget Hollywood films with Oscar winning actors, hooray. And so now you can start to be more discerning about dropping some of those old indie films off the demo reel. In fact, as soon as you get some of that high quality, full budget footage with recognizable actors, be very quick to drop some of that old stuff, the, the lowest budget stuff off of that demo reel. Now there are so many nuances I can't go into in this video, but there are times for instance, if a clip showcases a special skill of yours, and it, even though it's five years old and not a great quality clip, you still want to keep it on there to show those prospective buyers that you can do minimal stunts. Okay, then maybe that clip stays on there longer than you would normally leave a clip of that quality on your demo reel. 
But in general, you're trying to get the old stuff off the demo reel as fast as possible. And it might be old for a couple of reasons. It might be old because you look much more mature now or much more different than you did back then. Or it might just be old in the sense that it's not great quality or that it's just old. And don't be afraid that once you get three or four major credits on your resume that you are able to pull footage from, that you drop all of that old footage off your resume. And so now you're kind of back to where you were before, where you only have three, maybe four good clips. And you're editing that down to around a minute or a minute and a half. And so you might have gone from a two, two and a half minute demo reel, which was full of mostly old indie stuff, to now you're at a minute, maybe even less, but you have high quality studio projects on this demo reel. And from this point on, the demo reel will evolve, but largely will stay around the same time length for a number of years in your career. So while you continue to book more and more co-star roles, for instance, then you should just let some of the older or less flattering footage fall off the demo reel and replace it with newer, fresher, better footage from that most recent booking. And it can be hard to let some of that high quality studio footage go because you look really good and you're acting opposite potentially an Oscar winning actor. So why would you delete that from the demo reel? Well, it's because you have even better footage with an even better Oscar winning actor that showcases you even more. There's more coverage on you in this new clip, hopefully. And so those are the reasons why you would add some of this new footage onto the reel and then drop some of that old footage off, even though it's high quality studio network, Hollywood, full budget footage. Now, I do want to mention right here that you don't put everything on the demo reel. Because even if you have 10 or 15 credits under your belt of full budget productions, that 16th credit might have been a disappointment. You might not have gotten any real good screen time. Where can I see it all the time? It's a project that shoots locally and we didn't get cast in it, but we know a lot of our friends did. So we're watching with excitement to see when these people are going to pop up in this episode or in that film. And what happened? Where, where, where did they go? Oh, was that them? Was that the back of their head? I don't even know if I heard their voice. Or you heard their voice, but all their dialogue was off screen, and you're going, oh, man, I understood from an editing standpoint why they edited the scene that way, but it means that that actor gets nothing for their demo reel. It shouldn't be put on the demo reel. It's, it's just, that's not enough. It doesn't showcase you. It's not going to look better than what your current demo reel looks like. So you have to be discerning sometimes as to whether or not you should even bother trying to put that new footage on your demo reel. It always helps to put yourself in the buyer's shoes, the prospective agent that you're trying to court, or the new manager you're hoping to get, or that casting director whose door you have not been able to get through just yet. Is this new clip going to do anything for you whatsoever. Now, I also want to mention that as some of these really nice clips get deleted from your most recent demo reel, and you're still kind of in love with some of those clips because they do showcase you pretty well, they're just getting a little bit older, well, you can still upload them as clips to Actors Access or to your other websites. They just maybe don't deserve that spot in the highlight reel that is your demo. And the last sort of major evolution that I want to cover of the demo reel is when you do start booking bigger roles that might be at the guest star level, if it's for television, or are just a bigger supporting role in a film, and you now have minutes of footage from a single project, maybe it's time to start positioning yourself in your career to be more of that guest star or series regular actor. And so you do put together a longer reel that shows not just that you were cast in that film with that big actor, but that you also had a character arc and that you emotionally went on a journey and you were able to stand toe to toe with these bigger well-known celebrities all while carrying the weight of that character. And so for those demo reels, no longer should you limit yourself to two minutes in total runtime, because now for one project alone, you might need to show 90 seconds of a character's arc over the course of a series or over the course of that film in order to really represent the, the meat and potatoes of what you accomplish with that role. 
And you can always keep a speed reel or a faster, shorter demo reel as a bonus for the times that it seems necessary. But now you have this other longer guest star demo reel that is working in tandem with that faster speed reel, if you will. And so as your career develops and you are updating this demo reel once, twice, three times a year, here's just a little economics for you. Maybe don't pay actors access to upload each version of this demo reel. Because if you're doing that every three or four months, that's $22 a minute. And if you didn't keep it to two minutes and you even bled one second past two minutes, you're now paying $66 every time you want to upload that demo. It's just not worth it. I'm sorry, Actors Access, but it's just a travesty how much money is being charged to actors to upload and maintain this footage and these slate shots. Where does it end? I know you're a business, but maybe stop making so much money off of the backs of actors. There, I said it. So do what most actors here in the Southeast do, which is upload those clips, the ones that will be more long term. That clip that you did six years ago might still live on Actors Access because it still does represent a piece of you and you're still proud of that work. But the demo reel doesn't always need to be uploaded to Actors Access. You can just upload it with your submissions. Most casting directors prefer that anyways because it's less clicking for them to find your demo reel after you have submitted. And so you can save yourself $22, $44, $66 on upload by just uploading the reel with the audition. There, you're welcome. And the final thing that Brooke actually wanted me to share with you all because she edits these demo reels every week is to be aware of the trends in your market or in the industry as a whole when it comes to the demo reel. And what I mean by that is over time, the trends, just like with headshots, will change as to whether or not it's acceptable to put music under a montage at the beginning or end of your demo reel. If you should start with a headshot, should you end with a headshot? Should you have titles of every clip across the, the bottom of the screen throughout your demo reel? All of those answers will change from year to year sometimes and from market to market. So I'm not going to address what those answers are, because this video will live on YouTube for a long time and the advice will quickly become out of date. So just be on top of those trends in your market, in your city, or in the industry as a whole, so that you know whether or not you need to delete that headshot off the front of your demo reel or whether you need to add one because now it's in vogue once again. Okay, so those are the major stages of the evolution of your demo reel. And by the way, we have covered demo reels before. I'll link that in the show notes below. And we talk about in that video how to feature you more in a clip and not necessarily keep all of that extra stuff that is really doing you no justice for your demo reel. But if you have questions or comments, as always, please leave them in the comments below. That's it for now. Thanks for watching and we'll see you on set.